This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best all-in-one platform for any of your website building needs. Hey guys, it's Celestia, and today, as was voted for over on my Patreon, we're going to be talking about reference. More specifically, the ethics of reference and whether or not using it in your work can or should ever be considered cheating. It's a contentious issue in the art community, with some artists and art consumers claiming that the use of it is either cheating or just makes you less skilled as an artist to use or rely on than if you didn't. Others, conversely, arguing that it's not only fine but also a helpful and even necessary tool with which to improve your art, and with others still on the other end of the extreme, justifying plagiarism and tracing under the guise of calling those practices just using reference. There have been a ridiculous number of controversies surrounding those differences in opinions, and it's resulted in an unnecessarily and unproductively divided, black and white, stigmatized view on the use of reference as a whole. Which is why I think it's so important to discuss the facts of the matter, or at least as close to facts as we can get when it comes to a dilemma so largely based in morality and opinion. So we're going to, but not without first taking a moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a website building and hosting platform that has supported this channel for a long time now, and I love working with them, because their platform is one that I not only use for my own websites like my portfolio and my art studio, but it's one that I honestly swear by as the best possible place to build a site. There's pretty much nothing you can't add to your site with Squarespace, like from the examples from my own sites alone, I'm sure you can see that their image gallery options give artists the power to display their work beautifully and easily. And there are even more gallery options than you're seeing here, so I guarantee they'll have at least one that suits your needs and preferences. Their automatic image scaling also means that you won't need to waste time cropping or resizing your art just to make it all look good together there. But the galleries are just the beginning. You can make community spaces with blog posts and gated members-only content. You can make an online store, even with built-in print-on-demand integration if that's your preference. You can integrate it with your social media and import your content from there. You can do so much. And all in a way that easily, cohesively, and gorgeously represents you, your work, and your brand. Squarespace has what you need, whether you're an artist building a portfolio or a small business owner creating an online store. And their templates and tools make using their platform as easy as possible. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and please go check out squarespace.com now to get a free trial to build a site you're truly proud of. And once you have, go to squarespace.com slash duchesscelestia to get 10% off your first domain purchase. Now, all that out of the way, let's get into the video. So, is using reference cheating? When? And when isn't it? What makes it cheating? Where's the line between between reference and plagiarism? What about tracing? Well, all of that comes down to taking a closer look at the different types of reference materials, and the important spectrums of how those references are used, how much of one reference is used, and how those references are acquired and credited. But before we dig a little deeper into all of that, I first want to say that like any issue that comes down to morality-based opinions, I can't give any objective, factual conclusions here. Morality can't be defined, and one person could perfectly reasonably find one thing ethically contemptible, while another could perfectly reasonably find the same thing perfectly fine. One person could view deliberately implementing aspects of another artist's style without crediting them as morally reprehensible, and another could just as fairly claim that style can't be owned, and implementing aspects of someone else's in your own work is perfectly justifiable. One person could say that tracing a picture of your own hand is still cheating, even if it's your own hand in your own photo, and another could say that that's just good sense to achieve maximum accuracy. One person could say that being heavily inspired by another artist's piece and referencing it directly in their own is morally blameworthy if they post it without credit, while others could argue that it's impossible to be entirely original and not take inspiration from anything. So as long as they don't trace it, it's fine. I could give you a pretty much endless list of examples for the duration of an entire video, but we wouldn't be any closer to reaching any real kind of conclusions, because my point in bringing them up at all is to say that because all of these dilemmas come down to the personal values of the individuals debating them, there will never be a right or wrong answer. So as much as I possibly can, I want to avoid trying to in this video. My goal is to give as much objective analysis as I can to both sides of each issue, break down the most common controversies surrounding each one, and give a combination of my own personal opinions on each, as well as an attempt at some unbiased conclusions. Not objective conclusions, mind you, but unbiased ones, in addition to my own naturally biased opinions. What I mean is that in this case, if I can't answer whether or not a thing is cheating or morally bad, I'll try to instead determine where it falls on a scale of how acceptable it's generally considered within the community based on a variety of factors. So for example, I can't tell you if photo bashing is wrong or not. Instead, I'll try to analyze how questionable the community considers it 
it to be, whether or not it causes any quantifiable harm, and how often it's acceptably done within the industry and community alike. Not that the industry and community doing it a lot makes it fine, but it is nonetheless sort of like a baseline of to what extent will this thing be allowed by the majority, effectively establishing the majority opinion on the ethics of the thing. So long-winded explanation finally aside, let's get started. But before we get into the controversy surrounding reference, plagiarism, and tracing, let's establish some definitions based on the spectrum of reference use and the different types of reference materials themselves. Firstly, to use a reference in art is to look at a piece of visual source material and attempt to replicate some aspect of it in your original piece. To plagiarize a reference in art is to replicate the reference material completely, or at least very, very significantly, and then claim that idea and piece as your own. Some argue that if the piece is still done in your style and was not traced, it isn't plagiarism, but for the sake of this video, I will personally be making this differentiation based on the presence or lack of presence of credit. For example, if you do a Sailor Moon redraw like I do once every 45 minutes and you post it as a Sailor Moon redraw alongside the frame or screen cap that you redrew, that's not plagiarism, that's just reinterpretation. If you do a Sailor Moon redraw and claim it to be your own original piece of Sailor Moon fan art, for the sake of this video, I would consider that to be plagiarism, because the difference in definition here would be the false claim of the piece's main themes and ideas as your own, not the actual art style itself. Finally, tracing in art is when you directly draw over your reference, recreating an aspect of it exactly rather than reinterpreting it. Next, the spectrum of reference use. This comes down to the number of references used and the degree to which you actually recreate each one. So, for example, on one end of the spectrum would be an exact reinterpretation of one single reference, like a still life painting based on one single arrangement or photo of an arrangement of fruit. On the other end of the spectrum would be using a separate reference for every aspect of the piece and combining them in a way that uses the original reference material more loosely and as a vague guideline rather than a one-to-one -one copy. Most artists fall somewhere in the middle, often reinterpreting a handful of references in an original piece with some revision and reinterpretation based on their own individual styles. Some argue that the closer you get to the end of the spectrum that one-to-one -one replicates a reference, the closer you get to plagiarism, and the more controversial the practice subsequently is. But this also comes down to the reference's source material. For example, that still life painting of fruit aims to one-to-one -one recreate the way the artist is viewing that fruit, but that arrangement of fruit is their own creation in the first place, so their interpretation, even as a direct recreation of a reference, is still original and their own. If they're directly and deliberately recreating a reference of another artist's work, that becomes significantly more questionable, as that walks the line of plagiarizing the original source material. Tracing, although a lot of people aren't aware of it, is also a spectrum. On one end, we have artists who will trace every single detail of one single reference, and on the other end of the spectrum, we have artists who will combine multiple references and trace their vague forms to establish anatomy and composition, and then use that as a base to refine and add detail to. Like before, many feel that the closer you are to the one-to-one -one recreation of one reference end of the spectrum, the closer you are to plagiarism, and also like before, the nuance becomes apparent when the reference material is considered. An artist manually combining a bunch of different photo references that they own or have the rights to and tracing over their vague forms before refining it themselves is widely considered to be an acceptable and highly encouraged tool within the industry, whereas an artist tracing exactly over another artist's piece without permission or alteration is, is pretty much universally considered to be bad. To say that all tracing, however, is bad, fails to account for the differences in situation arising from the different types of references, and subsequently devalues the practice of tracing ethically and originally. So with that in mind, let's go over the different types of reference, and in doing so, finally go over some instances of when reference is and isn't quote-unquote cheating. First, there's photo reference, which is a category that contains several different subtypes. First, there are stock images. Observe this man excitedly enjoying a nice salad, for example. There are a weird number of these. Actually, I didn't consider this in the script. I was just going to Google it and hope I found one. But okay, here's like 40 then, because the passion these men have for these leaf piles is worth admiring and acknowledging for at least a second here. Anyway, these are images that stock image companies license out for creative use. All of these companies have different rules for what they consider that creative fair use to be. Some require you to credit them for anything they're used in, some let you use them for whatever you want, so long as you pay what's usually a pretty small fee, and some have specific rules on the alteration and reinterpretation of them. It's worth reading up on their terms and conditions on their sites just to be safe, but the point is, with this type of photo reference, legally and objectively speaking, there are many instances where you could not only use them as reference, you could even justifiably trace over them. Whether or not that should be considered to be cheating or morally blameworthy is impossible to say and comes down to personal opinion, but the fact of the matter is that doing so does not cause quantifiable harm to anyone. 
one. I personally feel like if you trace over one of these stock images one to one and change nothing about it other than like drawing your character exactly over that person in the photo, you should probably give credit for that and not claim it to be your 100% original piece, but that's just me. And again, you would be perfectly valid and within your rights to disagree. To me, the credit has less to do with giving a shout out to the major company providing the image that you had the right to use, but rather to avoid claiming that the piece's composition and anatomy and arrangement, they were all actually your original idea and creation, because they weren't. But that's the way I feel about pretty much every reference type, honestly. Like, if you're directly and exclusively recreating one reference image and nothing else, I think you should probably at least openly acknowledge that, but again, just me. The next type of photo reference is the random photo reference. This one is a little more ambiguous, both ethically and legally speaking. These are the references that you'll probably find on Pinterest or Google Images, and their original sources and photographers, as well as the subjects themselves, are rarely made available or even easily found. This is ambiguous because of a few reasons. Legally speaking, you may be using copyrighted material as reference without your knowledge or the owner's permission, and both the ethics and legality of that come down to how heavily you actually do reference that image. If you copy or trace the image heavily or even exactly, you may be infringing upon someone's copyright, plagiarizing their work, and potentially doing them harm. If you just, for example, use their sweater as a visual reference in a completely different piece as a way to see how a sweater would look on a subject standing in that position, you're probably in the clear, because the piece itself is not the reference that's being reinterpreted, but rather just one part of it is being referenced in an otherwise original, unrelated piece of art. Objectively, most would agree that that does not cause the original photo's owner any quantifiable harm, placing this type of reference in a relatively favorable light based on that spectrum of use. In my opinion, it's fine to redraw random images you find online in your own style so long as you don't claim those pieces to be your original ideas. Again, just me. The next type of photo reference is the type that's literally made to be art reference. For example, look at Rachel Bradley's photo reference packs, Senshi Stock's photo reference packs, anything on reference.pictures, and so on. These are photo references that were made with the explicit intention of being used as reference in art, and most are sold for that purpose. In that case, the only objectively unethical use of these images would be to effectively pirate and use them without buying them, or by violating the creator's terms and conditions. What I mean is that some of these sellers and photographers will request that if you heavily use one of their references in your work, you should credit them for it if that work is posted publicly. Others will even request that that work not be sold commercially. Others will openly say that you can trace it and never credit them for all they care. It comes down to the individual, but the only time using these as references would cause quantifiable harm would be if they're pirated or if the creator's wishes are disregarded. Finally, the last type of photo reference is probably the most straightforward and also the easiest to square away as 100% harmless. Your own photos. If you take a photo, you own that photo and you can do whatever you want with it, including using it as a reference or even tracing it. I don't think this is even an opinion. Like, this literally cannot cause any quantifiable harm to anyone. And while some still might consider tracing it directly to be cheating, that claim could be posed to all of these references, so we'll address that at the end. In terms of ethical use and legal rights though, this is hands down the easiest example of a completely harmless art reference. The next category of reference very much goes hand in hand with photo reference, so it won't take too long to cover, and that's 3D reference. It has its own differences, of course. For example, if you didn't create the 3D model or purchase or otherwise acquire the rights to use it, it doesn't matter if you give it an original pose, you may technically still be violating copyright and doing harm by using it as reference. Some also argue that if someone else posed the model and you used it as a direct reference and posted it without credit despite them specifically requesting that credit to be given, this also falls into the category of ethically blameworthy. But I personally worry that that falls a little too close to the realm of pose theft. I could see it if they used premium assets or custom models to arrange a whole 3D composition, but just the pose alone using a generic 3D model? I feel like in that case they really don't have all that much of a claim on it, because they can't copyright the way a human body is positioned. And in cases of models being sold in particular poses for small fees, I feel like it comes down more to convenience there, not ownership. For example, on my Patreon, all of my patrons who pledge $5 or more, in addition to a bunch of other stuff, get access to a bunch of color palettes that I make, organize, and post there. I don't own those arrangements of colors, even if I arrange them, and as a result, I make it very clear that none of them need to give me any credit if they use them. They're a paid perk because those who use them don't have to go to the trouble of coming up with a palette themselves, and what they're paying for is basically just the convenience of using one that's pre-made. It's almost less of a transfer of ownership and more of a pre-completed service. I don't own the colors, but I put them together so you didn't have to, and that's what that tiny piece of attributed financial value comes from. 3D 
models that are pre-posed for a nominal fee are, to me, the same. You're paying for the convenience of not having to pose that model yourself, but that doesn't mean you owe credit to the person who posed the model. That's just my opinion though, and ultimately, if you want to be as ethical and harmless as possible in your use of reference, I would still credit the person who posed the model if they requested you to. Regardless, in conclusion of this type of reference, it's pretty much always ethical to use as reference in any capacity, so long as you have the rights to that model. The next type is a little less clear, although still isn't quite as controversial as the last category, and that's AI art. I know, AI art is, in and of itself, a can of worms that I'm sure I've already warranted at least three angry pitchfork-wielding mobs coming to my house by even attempting to open. I made a video in the iCard above about why artists are so afraid of it and how it could impact the future of art as a profession, but I'll also be making another one about the ethical controversies surrounding it in the very near future. In the meantime, suffice it to say that since AI art generation as a whole is currently based on the Lyon dataset, that means that all, or at least the vast majority of it, was trained on a dataset that illegally scraped the copyrighted work of artists around the world without their consent. So by using any type of AI art generator to create anything, you are effectively using those artists' work yourself for your own personal gain in one way or another. That means that using AI art generation to create custom references is subject to a little more moral scrutiny and harm analysis than 3D models or photos, because by very nature, it's using the work of artists who may not want their art used to produce the reference you want. Now, personally, I think that that means that nothing created with AI art generation should be used commercially, or as a singular one-to-one -one reference that you replicate your entire piece based on. But I don't necessarily think that that means it can't be relatively ethically used as reference at all, because I believe that using the art of others as reference can also be ethically done without their permission needed or credit needing to be given. What I mean is that once again, to me, it comes down to a spectrum of use. If you're pretty much directly recreating someone else's art in your piece, I personally believe that you should get permission if you're posting it publicly, and absolutely should give credit. But, just like the photo references, I think that if, for example, you're just using their art as an example of how a sweater would be drawn in that pose in your piece that's otherwise completely different, that's completely fine. I would be more than fine with people using my art for that and would never think to criticize them for it or demand credit to be given or permission to be asked. So by extension, if AI art generation is basically referencing all of those pieces minimally to create an entirely different piece, it's the same to me as just manually using one aspect of an artist's work as reference. So in my opinion, using AI art generation to create reference photos, so long as you're relatively right-leaning on the spectrum of use, is fine. The problem arises when people use these tools to create pieces that they sell, therefore profiting from the illegal use of other artists' work, or when the AI art companies make a profit by charging you to create those references, therefore also profiting from those same artists. That in mind, I would personally only ever consider using AI-generated reference if it's via a free program, although I also understand that supporting them at all could be considered contributing to their profits and therefore the exploitation of artists, at least so long as Lyon continues to be the default that they're trained on. Finally, the last and most controversial type of reference image, like I've already touched on a little just now, is art itself. The least controversial types would be commercial media, like frames and screen caps from comics, cartoons, anime, and manga, and actual drawn art reference packs. For the first, I did touch on one example earlier where it could toe the line of plagiarism, redrawing that screen cap exactly and claiming it as your own original piece of fan art. In that case, credit being given would be an easy solution to avoiding any harm being done by that. The other end of the spectrum, though, being just using those screen caps as vague references for certain aspects of your piece, is generally considered as relatively harmless altogether. In terms of art reference packs, there are a lot of artists out there who just draw a whole bunch of poses, compile them, and provide them to other artists looking to either trace them or use them as reference, like the Poses for Artist books by Justin R. Martin. This is almost exactly the same, ethically speaking, as the photography reference packs. Whether or not it does any harm comes pretty much exclusively down to whether or not you're respecting the creator's wishes. If they want the poses to be only referenced but never traced, don't trace them. If they want credit given when you heavily reference their art, give credit. If they don't want pieces made heavily referencing their art commercially sold, don't sell them. So long as you respect their terms and conditions, I think it's safe to say that using this type of art reference in your work is perfectly harmless as well. Finally, the big boy. The most controversial boy, other than maybe Donald Trump or Logan Paul. Using the work of other artists as reference without their permission or credit. I can completely understand why people take issue with this, and it is 100% the one example where I can say with relative confidence that you should absolutely never trace these kinds of references without the artist's permission, at least if you're planning on posting it online. But referencing, as we've established, is different than tracing, and that's where it becomes more complicated. Obviously, as I've already mentioned earlier, in my opinion, the ethics of it very much come down to the spectrum of 
of use that I've talked to death at this point. If you're copying every part of the artist's work and only making small changes to either accommodate your style or try to make it quote unquote different enough, there's a strong case in defense of that being plagiarism and subsequently unacceptable. But if you're just referencing the way that artist drew a hand or foot in the piece and your own piece is completely different, I personally can't see how that's at all problematic. I don't think you should need to ask permission to do so, and I don't think you need to give credit for doing so. Those, again, are just my opinions, of course, and you're welcome to disagree, but I don't see any difference between that and any other type of reference in terms of the quantifiable harm done by it. If the original artist can look at the piece you reference theirs in and not see any significant resemblance to their own piece, I don't think they have any right to claim any ownership credit over your work. Every piece is inspired by something else and references something else, so to say that a hand looking similar to another hand because the artist referenced that hand is a bad thing is holding artists to an impossible standard. Some will bring style into it at this point though, finally broaching the dreaded topic of style theft. They would posit that if you're deliberately trying to implement aspects of another artist's style into your own work, you're copying or plagiarizing them, and it either shouldn't be done at all or should only be done with permission and credit given. And quite frankly, I understand that it's a matter of opinion, but my opinion is that that's dumb. You can't own a style, because at the end of the day, your own style was built upon influence from a million other artists' styles, because originality doesn't exist. Every art style is consciously and subconsciously influenced by other art styles, and to claim that you own certain techniques or characteristics and criticize other artists for choosing to use them themselves is just ridiculous to me. But that finally brings us to the end of the specific issues surrounding each type of art reference and the ethics and potential harm, or lack thereof, of all of them. And despite how long I've been talking, I still haven't tackled the biggest questions. Is using these references cheating? Does using them make you a less skilled artist? Is tracing ever okay? I saved these for last partially because I wanted to give as much context as possible before discussing them, and partially because when it comes to everything I've brought up so far, some degree of objectivity can be applied to the discussion. Those three questions literally cannot be objectively answered. There's no right and wrong answers to them, just opinions. And if you're still here and want to hear mine anyway, here they are. Is using reference cheating? No. In my opinion, using reference is never cheating. Drawing something based on a visual example of that thing is not cheating, as far as I'm concerned, and I think the stigma around its use is genuinely harmful to younger, more easily influenced, and discouraged artists. Reference is an exceptionally helpful tool that will always make your art better than it would be without its use, and so long as you're using it ethically in a way that you feel is right, there is never a reason not to use it. Moreover, I also think it's relatively impossible not to use it. Any artist who says they've never used reference is lying. They have to have referenced their own memory of a subject to draw it, otherwise they wouldn't have been able to. They're basically just saying, I chose to draw this based on my worse memory reference rather than an actual reference, knowing that it would turn out worse as a result, and therefore my art is better because my reference was worse. Like, drawing based on a memory is the same as drawing based on a reference, it's just that your memory will never be as good, clear, and accurate as a reference. So you're effectively giving yourself a handicap on purpose to prove that you can draw without the better option. It's counterproductive and is not, in my opinion, a fair evaluation of skill. Two artists of equal skill and experience could both draw Optimus Prime, one based on memory and one based on reference, and regardless of their skill, the one drawing with reference would create a better interpretation because they're interpreting better subject matter. Next, is tracing ever okay? That's a tougher one to me. I think even directly tracing another artist's work is completely fine if you do so only as a learning exercise and never post it. The same goes for any other type of reference. It's helpful and should honestly be encouraged as a method of study because it's legitimately such a useful way to learn, especially anatomy and style. But if you are going to be posting work that's traced, I personally feel like it becomes more complicated and is dependent both on the type of reference used and where it falls on the spectrum of use. If you traced another artist's work, ask their permission before even posting it, as far as I'm concerned, even if you were going to give credit. If you traced any other type of reference, I think whether or not credit needs to be given depends on how heavily you traced it. If you combine 10 references and only trace the vague forms of them to establish a jumping off point for your piece that you then refined and detailed without any tracing, I don't think that needs to be credited. But if you traced one reference and all of its major details, I would personally say that that should be credited. If you trace the entire pose and composition of the piece, I would personally also say that that should be credited. But that's so, so subjective and completely comes down to opinion, personal preference, and individual values. And I fully respect and acknowledge that many of you may rightfully disagree. I'd honestly really like to hear those opinions, especially if they differ from my own, because I know this is an incredibly polarizing, divided issue, and I'm sure there are problems and perspectives that I just haven't considered yet when forming my own opinions. After 
researching, planning, and finally writing this script, I definitely feel like I understand better why this issue is such a contentious one. To me, it always seemed very cut and dry. Reference good, tracing, sometimes good, sometimes bad. But trying to consider a more well-rounded analysis of all of the different instances where reference and tracing could be utilized absolutely showed me why so many people disagree. Because so much of it is so dependent on circumstance and personal values. But hopefully I was able to at least vaguely establish some kind of a cohesive summary of the most common circumstances and views in a way that was helpful or at least interesting. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll be doing another short video soon on the most effective ways to gather and use reference in your work based on my own studies and experiences, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested as well. Special thank you as always to channel members Café Soleil, Joseph Solomon, and Lotus Dreams Art, as well as patrons Batman, Kyle Lowe, Blue Swanson, Unity, Cora Fear, Jamisha Walker, Alengshi, Soul Crystal, Kim Nguyen, Shamil Sheep, Crazy Hisar, Gen Tong, Jacobus Peterson, Grayson Xavier, Typhinch94, Milkbean, MG, and Eclectorka for their support, and I'll see you in the next one.